Hey everybody, good to see you. Hope you're still able to, to listen to the talk, not uh, completely exhausted from, how, how many talks was that so far? Like how many tracks? Some 15, 20 since yesterday. Good, I, I will try not to bore you too, too much. Um, first question, who of you has been, uh, been using LibreOffice here? Great, that's pretty much everyone. You use LibreOffice? Oh, you're just not raising your hand. So me, of course, as well. Um, excellent. Um, who of you is using uh, GPG for, I suppose, email? Um, that's almost everybody. Great. So you're in the perfect talk for that. <laughs> um, yeah, this is about um, uh, GPG, Open PGP support in LibreOffice. Um, this has been kindly sponsored by the uh, German Federal Agency of uh, Computer Security. Um, that's the logo there. Um, so that out of the way. Um, some words about me. My name is Thorsten Behrens. Um, I work for CIB. Um, in another capacity, I was one of those guys who um, went with the uh, code and um, did LibreOffice back in the day. I'm still involved with that project, and I'm under the, there's a German foundation that's kind of uh, um, collecting some money and holding some trademarks and running some servers, and I'm in that board. Um, other than that, I've been working with that code since quite a few years. Um, uh, early at Sun and then at SUSE. Um, and also I'm a pretty outspoken um, supporter for open standards and free software. Um, I'm also, I've been working with the OASIS ODFTC since many years. I've been involved for a few years with the OXML from the other side because we were trying to um, get a handle there and get um, f back in the day for open office to get stuff um, properly documented so we can implement that. Um, yeah, sorry for a little bit of advertising here, but um, this is my company or our company, CIB. Um, it's a medium sized um, company based in Munich, some offices all uh, across Europe. Uh, we do tons of things. One of them is LibreOffice. Um, And this is a bit more about, more specifically, what, what we are doing. Um, as I say, uh, LibreOffice is one of the, just one of the, um, the products or the services that we're providing. Um, to a large extent, we're a consultancy business. So we, um, you come to us and we implement stuff for you or we fix your bug or we build your product. Um, but we also have um, products like long-term support for LibreOffice uh, and other stuff, mobile application, um, PDF, tools, um, document processing tools, uh, with a number of banks that we provide with uh, like mass production systems for documents so that, that um, you get your, um, your account statements or for insurance agenc agencies, um, those, those, annual, um, those annual invoices. <clears throat> um, for LibreOffice, um, as I said, we are doing Consultancy, so this is one of the, the consultancy projects, this uh, GPG for Libra. We also do um, long-term support. We have a number of uh, customers there um, who, um, who don't want to upgrade um, in the pace that the, 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 the LibreOffice Upstream project is updating, which is about once a year. Um, we also have some support, um, some trainings. Um, uh, we have, we do macro stuff and extension stuff and all of that. If you have questions um, on that, just um, come to me after the talk and we chat. I'm not going to go much deeper here. Um, just that if you want to do something with LibreOffice in a professional capacity, we have, we have some thousands of seats to, uh, to, um, to run there and need some help there. Um, we are one of the companies um, who can who can provide the help. Okay, so back to the actual um, topic of the talk, which is GPG for Libra. Um, that's the, the short name for it. Um, the longer name is in the talk. Uh, first, we will look a little bit into signing. 
which is the part of, so there's two parts, signing and encryption. Signing is the part that's actually available as we speak in LibreOffice 5.4. So you can get that in a production ready um, version and you don't need to run or compile some bleeding edge code. Um, so why, why in the first place um, did we do that? Or why is the, uh, the BSI, this, this federal um, agency of computer security, why, 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 why are they funding that? So first of all, um, there can't be enough crypto these days. Um, it's like, so the more crypto we do and the more products there are with built-in crypto, the harder life is for the bad guys, be that state-level actors or just plain criminals. So, so the more tiny little pieces of crypto are there that are guarding, protecting, um, securing your communication and, and your data, the better. So this is one of the many, many areas and many, many places where um, like, um, just adding crypto um, improves overall security and, and makes our digital life a little bit less vulnerable. And LibreOffice is, um, is fairly widespread, so uh, that's some estimates, 120 million users um, out there using that, so adding that piece um, helps perhaps a little bit to, to improve there. <clears throat> um, another aspect, so LibreOffice already, or OpenOffice back in the day, and LibreOffice inherited that code. Um, there is, since I think 2005 or something, there is um, support for SMIME or X509 certificates built in. Um, that's cool. Um, but um, that's perhaps not the easiest thing to, um, to do if you want everybody to use crypto because it's kind of involved. It's not so easy uh, to get those keys. It's not so easy to get other people to trust those keys. It's not so easy, especially under Linux, um, to actually make LibreOffice or OpenOffice find your key. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not so nice, it's not so very usable. Um, so, and and one, of the, one of the goals really was to get something that is almost natural, like the, just, just at the tip of your fingers, like you just click here and, and it's all done. So you, don't, you don't need to set up uh, things, you don't need to run shell scripts or do system level uh, or system administrative level stuff. <clears throat> so that was one of the tools, it has to be very easy um, so the, the trivial stuff like signing or encryption has to be very easy. And if you do more involved things, then you're, you're, you're good, you're, you're fine. But um, the initial experience should be, should be very easy. Um, so um, yeah, what, what should the outcome should be something cheap, ubiquitous, like should be everywhere, uh, should be peer to peer. So there shouldn't be any central uh, authority like with X509 that needs to you don't need to have the certificate authority, you don't need to have this, or at least not necessarily, this chain of trust. Um, yeah, and then for LibreOffice, it also would be really nice if it's cross-platform, because LibreOffice is cross-platform. So everything that is just Windows or just Mac or something that, that's kind of um, not so great. Um, yeah. So why, why, did we, why did we then go for um, GPG or OpenPGP? Well, it has almost all of those features, um, plus a number of, um, of, of extra ones, like, for example, a nice, um, I mean, it's, it, it's very, very well established. It's probably reasonably secure. It's been out there for a long, long time, so I suspect most of the bugs, most of the problems have been discovered already. It has nice things like um, smart card plugins, like this YubiKey stuff. So you, if you want to have kind of extra, um, extra layers of security that you can add to that, or two-factor authentication, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Um, another question, of course, is beyond this, uh, oh, this nice fuzzy feeling like, oh, crypto makes us more secure. Um, there are those, those aspects, especially for, for signing, um, that's like, so why would somebody want to sign a document that's 
imminently editable. So why, why would that help? I mean, for PDF, it's kind of signing a, a paper. It's, it's a document that is kind of, it's like a printout. It's fixed. But why would it help for something like, like a text document um, that you can still edit or, or a presentation or, or a spreadsheet? Um, well, actually, um, so there's multiple layers there. First of all, it's, it's helpful to know that someone who has reviewed a document and sent it along can be sure that it's like on the way it can't be tampered with. So the other side can be sure this guy has signed it and it arrives at the state that this, this person deemed it's okay. The second thing is it's, it, it also authenticates the other side. So I can be sure that it's this guy and not the middleman who signed it and changed something. Um, it's also integrity, so I can be sure that no middleman came and inserted some, some evil macro virus or something, or some funny PNG with a, that's kind of triggering a buffer overflow. And there's this, this nice little thing called non-repudiation, uh, which means the other side also cannot claim, no, no, I didn't send you that. Yes, you did, yes. Here's your signature, or at least it proves that somebody with possession of that person's key um, that, that produced that, which is not, I mean, in front of a court, it might not be exactly the same, but for the sake of the argument, um, let, let's assume it's, it's the same. Um, yeah, um, so for the, um, and for the encryption, it's of course this, um, like with, with cloud, I mean, you can say, what, what point is there to encrypt that? I mean, it's, it's on my disk, but well, Maybe your disk is not encrypted, or maybe you have some, some cloud storage there, some, some, uh, something that's syncing that to, to the cloud, um, or it's some, some file share, or, it's, or it, it gets backups in your company. So it's kind of helpful, um, at least if there's no extra price or not much of an extra price you're paying, uh, to also secure so-called data at rest. So data that's not... I mean, data in transit, that's kind of obvious that it should be, and it's, these days it's pretty much 100%, so everybody's using HTTPS, so data that's in transit is usually secure, but data at rest, which is on your disk or in your network share or in the cloud, sometimes ain't. So, um, and it also helps <coughs> um, to be able at least um, to offer that option uh, to make that unreadable uh, to the occasional um, attacker. Um, yeah, so good. Let's um, get into the to media's race. What's this all about, or how did we do that? Um, well, we took LibreOffice um, and we took this GPGME, which is a, uh, which is an abstraction, IPC abstraction around uh, uh, GPG and some other tools. Um, and so we, we, we plug that into LibreOffice and we call some functions there and outcomes um, signed um, or, and or encrypted ODF. And on the other side uh, of, the, of the fence, there's IPC layer or just plain um, calling, just plain program, XCPE, just, just spawning a process and handing some arguments there. Um, so, um, uh, GPG, that's called via IPC, so we, we hand over all the hard crypto and, uh, and, and um, entering the pin um, and, and um, perhaps storing that pin for a while so you don't have to enter it again and again. We leave that to something that is provably or at least very likely more, more secure and, and better audited than LibreOffice. LibreOffice has some 10 million lines of code. Um, it's entirely possible that um, not every line there is, uh, is completely fine. So, and, and just the, 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 um, the surface, the attack surface is much smaller and, and the code is much better reviewed for, for GPG. So that, that's kind of extra, extra layer of security. So we just hand it over to uh, GPG, um, let it do the, the crypto and get the um, the encrypted document or the, the signed um, digest or the, the, the signed part of the document back. 
We also uh, use um, whatever is there on the system for um, key management. So there's a basic level of um, handling keys um, built into LibreOffice. But whenever, you, for example, you want to do trust editing or you want to whatever, add a sub key or an email address or something like that, um, you're going to send to one of those guys. And there's a, just a list of um, executables that are tried in order. Um, that's most of them there. <clears throat> so that should largely um, have you covered. So I uh, write this KGPG or something for KDE. That's also supported. I, I forgot to, to add that to the slides. Um, OK. This is a bit more technical. Um, just tell me if, if it's getting. Uh, by the way, if there's any questions uh, so far, just feel free to ask. Um, just shout at me. Um, we, we don't necessarily have to have that at the end. So this is um, uh, like diving a little bit deeper into how this, um, um, how this, um, um, with with the multiple processes that works. Does anybody know this, this nice mobile um, application, by the way? That's some, some impress remote control and has some nice laser pointer here. And I um, really like it. And I mentored the GSOC student who implemented that. And it's really cool. Um, so yeah, so for the certificate manager, this just gets handed over here. And then it's kind of doing this editing of the keys. And it's um, also interacting here with the GPG. Um, and so essentially, what the, there's two, I mean, there's also some, some key management or key listing functions that we're calling. But essentially, we're just calling two uh, functions as GPGME and as a sign and encrypt. And we just pass some data buffer there um, and get a data buffer back. And everything else happens in this uh, GPG process. So we were waiting until this is done. And this is interacting with the, with the agent. So. Um, when, when you have an agent running and you don't, whatever, some 10 minutes or half an hour timeout, so you don't need to retype the passphrase over and over again. This is all kind of nicely encapsulated. Um, and out comes um, either signed or encrypted um, ODF here. Um, so this works really wonderfully on Linux. That probably will work reasonably wonderfully on Mac. Uh, that doesn't currently work at all um, on Windows. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I was a bit surprised. Um, you might not be surprised, but I was a little bit surprised because uh, so the problem is that uh, LibreOffice is an open source project. So we really, really, really want to build whatever we run from source. So we, we built from source on Linux, we built from source on Mac, and it's not a problem uh, for GPGME. Uh, but we want to build from source also on the, on the Windows, and that's a problem with GPGME, uh, because GPGME is a um, kind of um, hardcore auto tools, um, auto conf project. It simply doesn't build, like I, I tried very hard, and it doesn't build on Windows. Um, and so you're asking me, oh, but what, what, what's the story with GPG for Win? Well, they cross build, they, they build on Linux. But they, do, uh, they use uh, MinGW and they cross build there. So they have all the, the Linux tool chain. Um, and then, well, but, but we, the problem is we can't, that, that sounds like, well, where's the problem? But the problem is we want to build, on, we have to build on Windows. And we can't, um, at least technically from, from the upstream project, we can't. Um, kind of spin up some Linux VM and hand over the building to that and then get the binaries back and then plug it all in. That's a bit involved. Um, and we, ca we also can't, although there has been attempts, we can't build um, LibreOffice. We can't cross-build LibreOffice because we need, for binary compatibility, um, we need the Microsoft compiler. This is very unfortunate. As I say, there was some attempts to do cross-building, but it turns out that our users don't really care uh, that we are those freedom lovers and like to build on Linux. Um, they only care that their extensions that they paid money for, uh, potentially, that they still work. And they don't because the, the ABI, the C++ ABI, is different um, if you use uh, GCC um, and, and the, 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 the C++ libs there, or you use um, the Visual Studio compiler. 
So that's um, unfortunate. Um, so that's the reason why for LibreOffice 5.4 there's only um, Linux supported, although I'm reasonably proud to say that Linux is really, really well supported, so that works. Um, although it's a dot, dot zero version, I'm aware of, of one bug, and it's fixed. It's going to be fixed in 5.4.1, which is out in, in, I think, a week or something. Um, <clears throat> And we plan to support Windows, so I have some, some badass guy sitting on that problem to port that over. Um, we, we hope to ship that for 6.0, which is due in uh, end of January next year. Um, and it's really just compiling. Well, actually, I, I got it to compile. It's just not linking. But at the end of the day, it's not working. So um, yeah, but in theory, it should. So technically. Um, the same support, the same techniques, the same abstraction works on Windows. So there's software there, like um, like some Outlook plugin that uses that, but it's it's using the, the cross-build binaries that we can't. Um, good. So what did we actually do? Like, I mean, that was what we didn't do. It's like we kind of, we, we didn't manage yet to. <laughs> to get it working on Windows. What, what did we actually do? Some, some, uh, some screenshots there. I will also show a quick demo if I make that. It should still work. <clears throat> so first of all, we, uh, we did some UI improvements. Um, what you see here um, is uh, this info bar. That's this, like you know that from the browser probably. That's kind of newish, not, not so like 20 years old UI concept. So Whenever the, the, the software wants to tell you something that, is, that doesn't require immediate answer, like so it's just not popping a, a dialogue in front of your face, it's just kind of gently telling you that something is happening, it's this info bar. Um, so we, um, we, uh, we added that. The reason why we added that is this, um, this little thing here. Um, uh, you see this, I mean, you probably don't see that, which is the point <laughs> entirely. <laughs> um, so there's a tiny little icon in the status bar uh, that historically was showing the signature status. And, and do you see that? No, you don't see that. I, I don't see that either. <laughs> so it, uh, it's kind of blown up uh, some uh, thousand percent here. This is this one. Uh, so this is absolutely pointless. I mean, it's just the screens have grown by, uh, by so much you don't see that. So this is like it's still there, but it's not. Um, so when, when, when a signature is invalid, you get this red info bar, which is very obvious. And this, the signature is OK. Like, it's technically valid, but you don't trust the key. You get this orange one. And if everything's fine, then you get this nice blue here. But the, script, the, the slide was full. Um, yeah, but that's a bit. Of, so we, we integrated all. So this is um, this is actually the old dialog from yes. Say again. That's a very just coming up here. So the question was, if I open a document with a valid section, uh, signature and a good key, what am I seeing? Uh, so let me just play and show you. Uh. Oh, that's the wrong. That's what you see. So we, we did discuss that. So my, my um, originally the color was green uh, that I was picking there. Um, but I was told that green is not a good idea. 
Um, so you really want this blue, which just kind of means like, be calm, it's all good, it's all wonderful. <laughs> Green is too exciting. <laughs> Yeah. So let me do that. So and um, if I save, then um, then but let's uh, quickly. Um, let me just finish the sentence, uh, and then we go. We can play with the with the with the feature a bit. I mean, there should be time. So what I wanted to tell you is that this is uh, an integrated list of all valid keys that I have or valid certificates that I have for signing. You see two X509 certificates there at the top. Um, <clears throat> and then comes a chunk of uh, open PGP uh, keys that I, I, I uh, happen to have um, uh, in, my, in my keychain. Um, and and the, th the idea behind that was that it shouldn't matter for the user. It's really he or she, but, but the only thing that she, she should be interested in is this is my selection of keys, and then I can perhaps choose whatever my recipient might be knowing or whatever is still valid. Um, so I just click on that, and there's no, no weird UI, no, no external program that's kind of outside the, the, the LibreOffice uh, user experience showing up there. Um, just that, um, oh, Empress Remote has stopped. How very unfortunate. So I need this one. So this list is basically the same list that your browser trusts HTTPS. Say again? This is the same list that your browser trusts by opening HTTPS. Um, so the question is whether that's the, the same, uh, this X509, whether that's the same uh, CA that, that my browser is using for, uh, for HTTPS. Uh, yes and no. So it's, it's technically, it comes from, under Linux, it comes from Firefox. And it's also the same concept, like with the certificate authority. But it's a different, I mean, you need, actually, Either you, you do, do, do something like CA cert, which happens not to be in any browser, so it's kind of involved, so you need to tell everybody to install that, uh, that root certificate, or you buy that, it's, it's, it costs actual money uh, to get yourself some, some certificate there. Um, so that's some 70 bucks a year or so, or so that you pay for that. Um, okay, so, but there's this little uh, button there, so start certificate manager, and then you get the seahorse or the Cleopatra, and you can, can do some, some key editing. But, um, yeah, why not, why not let's, let's do the demo a bit. Um, so, so this is the, <clears throat> this is the document, um, and, so what it says now, I don't know if, if that's visible from the back of the room, the signature was valid, but the document has been modified, and now it's yellow. So I can give me this one, and then it tells me, well, before you do anything with signing, you rather save that, um, because the, what, what's happening, it's signing on the XML level, so whatever I'm doing now, I need, need a, an exported XML version of that document, so I'm I'm saving that, um, and then I can just do this sign, and I'm using my test key here, and then uh, this is a test, um, and uh, you know, that's very funny, you can't see that, but I'm going to... Uh, still can't see that, which is a shame. Now you can see that. Um, so uh, that's, the, um, that's the pin entry. Uh, GPG is it's very uh, smart there, so it, it has it detected that I have a terminal connected, because the version of LibreOffice I'm showing you is some, some uh, uh, developer build on the way to 541 that I was just uh, downloading and unpacking and starting from the terminal, so it detects there's a terminal 
connected to that process, and it's now um, giving me that. So that wouldn't normally happen to you. you normally, when you install that, then you start that probably from your window manager or from a desktop environment. Um, but there we go. I found that um, pretty amusing the first time because I couldn't find the, the pin entry um, until I was checking the, the debugger console. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, you see this is again, that this is the same small icon up here. And that's also in the status bar, so it's almost invisible. But when I close that guy, um, then I'm again getting the info bar again, which is blue again, so it's, it's all, all fine. Um, so what we can do now uh, is we can tamper with that document a bit. Um, so let me get to editor somehow in the front. There we go. Um, hmm. Ah, here's the screen. Oh, that's very helpful. So that's this document here. Um, that's the. So this is a little, little bit of editor magic. Is that visible? Should I? Maybe I should. A little bit bigger. Okay, like that. So this is the actual uh, um, ODF uh, document. This is the the text you've just been uh, seeing here. And um, so let's now. Do some fun here. And then we save that, and then we reload the document. And voila, so uh, signature is invalid. So that's what we would expect. Um, I can now redo the or undo the change and save again. And actually, I didn't try that before, but I would expect the signature to be OK again. Oh, shame. Um, so there's some amount of reformatting. Uh, this is not part of the. This is not part of the signed content, um, but um, it's possible that the editor is doing some funny, uh, some funny formatting things here. Um, and it's actually, it's not well. So what ha what happens technically is that there's some amount of cano canonicalization going on, so it shouldn't matter. Uh, whether there's like space here or here, um, but yeah. Uh, so what is it saying anyway? Okay. Um, so there's something else we can do. Okay. So there's 15. Is that for 45 minutes or for an hour? OK, so, so we would then have 50 minutes for questions. Excellent. Good, good, good. Um, <clears throat> so let's not um, go down here so much. So what? Um, so just, just trust me. So it's, it's erring on, the, on being safe. So um, whatever you do, for example, if you there's something else to show how that works. Um, Um, so this is the this is the actual. Um, let's pretty print that a bit. Is that somehow visible? So what happens here is that so this is a zip ODF is a zip archive. So it has a, a number of documents like images and XML files. So what's it doing? It's um, 
uh, calculating I a di digest for each and every of those um, embedded uh, um, fragments, like XML fragments and images, and sticks that into the sticks that into this uh, document signatures XML, and then it calculates a signature over this um, over this XML part here and then puts that into the signature value here. So th that's basically how it's working. So when you, when you change the, the content XML, uh, this digest value here uh, will be different. And if the digest value will be different here, then the, the signature for this document, uh, signatures XML, won't match anymore. OK, so back to the talk. Um, yeah, so this is, again, what, what I was showing you. So that, that's the certificate manager there that comes up. Um, that's how the markup looks. So this is based on, this is actually already a standard ODF. So all those um, PGP extensions that you find here, this PGP data, uh, a key ID and key packet, um, that's already standardized. That's already just nobody used it yet. So we could just uh, um, add that, um, write that out, and um, yeah, it's not going to be invalid or problematic or any work in the standard. Um, so encryption. Uh, <laughs> um, so in, in contrast to the uh, signature stuff, which is all wonderful, rock solid, works, uh, standardized, is shipped in the product, uh, this is kind of still work in progress. Uh, I have something to show you today uh, that's actually encrypting um, uh, an ODF document. Um, but there are some buts. First of all, um, it's my private branch. Secondly, um, it's not working. Um, um, Round tripping doesn't quite work. And third, we need to extend ODF for that. So that needs to go to the ODFTC for standardization. And it's kind of extended ODF than what we write at least for a while until this is properly standardized. <clears throat> so I think it's probably best to demo that straight away. Okay, so this is, uh, this is, we see some random git hash there, that's some development version. So we're gonna um, save that one. Um, so this is but ugly, um, but uh, that's one of the so-called LibreOffice internal dialogues. So that's not using the system file dialog, but, but the kind of homegrown one. I need that because I need this, this extra flag here. Um, this is, um, I mean, in principle, this can um, be added to the system dialogues as well. It's just a bit more work, and I didn't get to that. So let's try that here. Um, so um, what happens now? It's loading some 1,200 uh, keys, because that's what happens to be in my uh, PGP keyring. Um, this is a debug version, so I have to talk for some minute or two to not uh, have you uh, bored too much. <laughs> but it will eventually pop up this <clears throat> this dialog, this the certificate selection dialog, <clears throat> where you can then select um, uh, keys like for the recipients. Uh, the plan is to um, to encrypt to self automatically. Um, there's a little bit of magic involved there and some, some heuristics that might not always work. So there, there, there will be probably some user uh, configura configurable setting that where you can set some, like, like for email as well, where you can set some preferred um, key for that so that you always encrypt against that one. <clears throat> so now we have the, the list here and then we can uh, write Klaus Müller. Um, okay, now it's doing the encryption and saving that. And 
the, the signature has, has vanished, again, because I was saving, but I, I could add that again. It would just go on top. Um, and now we would check the, um, I have to, it's a little bit more involved, so we need to, So um, this content XML, this is now encrypted, so you don't see much. I mean, that's the entire point. What you do see um, is something here. So the only file that is not encrypted in, a, um, in, a, um, in an encrypted ODF is the, the, the manifest, because you need somehow you, you need the information like which key and, and, and where to start from. Um, So let's load that here. So uh, a little bit bigger. So again, um, this is uh, based on, oh, you've seen that. So this is based on um, existing standards. So it's not that we're reinventing the wheel there. Uh, we, we take XML encryption, the XML encryption standard, um, cherry pick the parts that we need for that. And so the plan is that this has not yet happened, but once this is working reliably, and I'm pretty sure that there's nothing much left, I'm going to write a proposal to the ODFTC <coughs> uh, that says, look, guys, this is XML's uh, encryption standard, and this is the schema, and we need that in LibreOffice, and can we just embed that into the um, ODF schema? And that has worked pretty well in the past. And what you see, um, what, what's, what's here is like some key, encrypted key um, element section that basically says, I have a key here. That's, the, uh, that's the, 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 the transport key. This is just a random sequence of, of uh, some, some 16 bytes of random, uh, random numbers um, that's actually used to encrypt the, the, the streams. And that itself is encrypted with my with that with the key ID here, which is base 64, 64 but it's just the the normal uh, GPG key ID. And there's also the the key uh, itself, the the public key is embedded. So uh, that's another nice uh, feature of this LibreOffice um, work there. That it's a nice way to uh, to distribute keys because with every document that you sign and with every document that you uh, encrypt, you will give the other person your key, which is very helpful because that's another, I mean, the more w different ways there are to get someone a key, the harder it is to give, him, give this person a key that is, um, that is forged. So the more, and, and, and the key, man key managers usually tell you, oh, there's a key with the same user ID, but it's a different key. Should I import that or not? Should, do you trust that or not? Um, and it's also something that it's hard to modify because it's already there in this, in this document. So if somebody wants to attack somebody or wants want to play man in the middle or, or girl in the middle, um, he or she would need to kind of make sure that all those documents are uh, cleansed or updated as well. So that is largely... Oh, yeah, and then that's... Kind of, this is the, the part that I'm not done yet with and not, not completely happy with. Um, so this is um, per file, per stream information on how the, the actual files are encrypted. And there's a variety of algorithms to use and that's kind of work in process. process progress, sorry. So that's about all I wanted to tell you. Some roadmap there. I mentioned a few aspects there. So um, what we have. As of today, if you go to libreoffice.org, you can download 5.4 if you run Linux. And if you have ever uh, created a private key, you can start signing documents today. Um, for February 2018, you plan that for Windows. I hope we get this done for OS X as well. 
Um, if it's not too much work, I don't know about Android. Technically, it should be working. There's also key managers for Android. Um, it's just, well, there's almost so, always so much to do and so little time. So it's, at least for me, it's not a priority. But again, I mean, this is uh, open source. So if somebody is interested in helping with OS X or with Android um, or even with, with the core implementation, just come to me after the talk. Um, I will most happily tell you where to start. Um, yeah, so um, encryption, as I said, this is not in uh, release yet. This is in a private branch I'm working on. Um, but this will also most definitely be done for LibreOffice 6.0. Um, that needs ODF extensions. Um, and for ODF next, whatever that is, 1.3 or 2.0, that's a bit unclear. Um, but we'll be working with the ODFTC to get this standardized so that um, the encryption part is also standard. ODF. That said, uh, right now LibreOffice is the only um, application uh, or user, user agent or user facing application that supports that. I did find um, a little Python library though that, um, that also supports this, this uh, PGP extensions from, from the XML uh, encryption and XML signature standard. Okay, great. Um, Interesting. <laughs> it should have been right. Thanks for um, for staying. Thanks for uh, your attention. I hope you uh, you heard a little bit of interesting stuff here. I now open um, for questions. If there's any. Yes, please. Um, so, oh, so is there any uh, any other Office Suite, if I captured that correctly, that supports that? So um, um, broadly, no. So for X509, there is support in OXML. It would be possible to add that in the same vein there uh, for PGP. I just wonder whether there's any point, whether there's any chance that, that Microsoft would support that. Um, if it's part of ODF, uh, then perhaps they might. I guess Microsoft but, has a lot of corporate uh, customers. Actually. Yeah, and X509 is, is really a big corporate, like if you're a big corporation and you have like this strictly hierarchical and it's all kind of, under control and you can deploy to millions of uh, uh, computers, then X509 is sort of okay. But for something distributed, for something like, like even in Germany, even the, the public sector in Germany is so diverse, like so many different entities and everybody has their own IT, so it's, it's now impossible to, to have some, some federal level, all of Germany, X509 at least from what I hear. So yeah, but, but it's, I mean, it's up to all of us. Um, just if, if this is LibreOffice, I mean, it's open source, so it's easy to take the code and, and, uh, um, and run with it. Um, it's up to all of us to lobby other projects, other implementers to, uh, to support that. But it's also not doing any harm. I mean, so the worst that happens is that if it's signed, then, well, then, there's no, no signature information shown. So that's, it's like getting a document without the signature. Yeah, it's not terrible. It as a leaning edge for the office in like advertising that you can do this for, like if you have two parties that both talk to the office, then they can sign and they can, they can easily communicate and stuff. Yeah. So, so the, the, the comment was that um, uh, it's, it's good marketing for LibreOffice and that uh, it kind of helps perhaps to, to get more people to use LibreOffice because LibreOffice instances can talk to each other. That's true. I mean, that, there's always this, I mean, it's, even for LibreOffice, <clears throat> it's only in the 5.4. So there will be some time for this to diffuse into, the, um, into, the, in, into general use. More questions? 
patch to you know? I have no idea. Um, but I can, I mean, maybe if you can have more questions while I'm trying to figure that out. So, any further questions while I'm fighting with Git? So you said you have your own uh, key store, like executive key store in LibreOffice. Um, no. So what? But LibreOffice. So historically, LibreOffice and OpenOffice used uh, the Firefox uh, key store for under Linux. Optionally, the Thunderbird one, which is kind of a disaster because there's no under Linux. There's no no one single uh, key store. Um, I mean, GPG is sort of that now. I mean, there's also X509 support. And we could, in theory, also support that, uh, the, the GPG ME uh, with X509. It's just not, it doesn't have a priority right now. So that's about the size of the patch. If you can see that, maybe I should change the color. Um, is that visible? So this is, it's not, oh, uh, actually no, I'm lying. That's the encryption part. So the, for, the, for the signature part, that's some, I don't know, thousands, 1,500 lines of code, perhaps. Let's change that. Okay, so it sounds like terribly bad. Because uh, uh, I, I see a disadvantage in doing that, which is that you introduce a lot of complexity for issues that may have been better solved with another layer, like you, because you could also sign and enter the files and so on. So um, actually, I think on, so it's not, I mean, it's, uh, so the hard part with LibreOffice is always like finding this one line. Um, sorry, I should repeat the question. So you, you, you said, uh, so the question was whether uh, that's not adding uh, too much complexity to, uh, to the code, if I got you. Yeah, right. especially in light of uh, the problem being potentially solved at another layer. Could be, you know, send, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and my, so my statement there is that it's usually, I mean, most of what we're, what we're doing there is so some 70% of the functionality is there because of X509 support. We're just piggybacking on top of that. Um, and um, in the process of implementing that, we also uh, remove quite some code. So we, we just, while working with the code, we discovered unused um, areas that we were just removing. So on balance, I mean, we're talking about 10 million lines of code here on balance. It's, it's a rounding error. Um, there are some, I mean, there's some added complexity, but it's not much to the, of course, to the files because we always embed, now we always embed the, the, the GPG key. That's some, whatever, kilobyte or two that, that's added to, to the file size. But only if you use the feature. If you don't sign, and you don't pay the price. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.